Hey guys, I am waiting for somebody to join me. I have a surprise for you guys. Hello. Oh my gosh, look at you. What's up? Hi, how are you guys? How are you? Good, good. Good. Okay, you guys, I told you I had a surprise for you. <laughs> this is Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. If you are coming from Mackenzie's side, welcome. I am a blogger. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and YouTube. But Mackenzie and I have been... I don't know, we've become friends over the last few months, and um, she was, the latest episode was just on of Teen Mom OG, and it was a doozy. Um, there's a lot of comments in, on Macy's page about it, and I know you wanted to talk about it, so. Um, yeah, that was a doozy. <laughs> That's a part yeah. of words for it. <laughs> Um, I had no idea that it was like that. I knew that, you know, he was cutting weight and stuff, but I had no idea it was that intense. And I yeah. have cried all day. All day? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that I hurt. Like, that hurts me, you know? And I, Ryan and I are, like, 100% on the same page with this. We just feel like, as a young kid, like, Let's just enjoy being a kid. And yeah, sports are great. They're a great outlet. They're so good for you on so many levels, and that's been proven. But this is so far. Like, I was like, oh my gosh. So. Yeah. So on the episode, she's at the, I thought, okay, the first scene, they're at the, um, they're working Their house. Out. Yeah. Yeah. They're working out. And she is like critiquing him and like, telling him not to do things and she is being like the consummate crazy like like sports mom yeah and you know on certain levels like I I kind of get it about pushing and I always did well like being pushed and having goals and you know how to succeed and stuff and like so I get a little bit of that but yeah. that was crazy <laughs> yeah and she said she has them on a thousand calorie diet. Yeah. Okay. So I looked it up because he's how old? 11? Yeah. Okay. So I looked up the average caloric intake for a child and they have them in a ton of sports. Yeah. And according to Child's MD, it says that he should be eating 20 from 2000 to 2600 calories a day. Yeah. And she has him eating half of that. Hey, hold on just a second. My fire alarm's going off. <laughs> oh, hold on okay. just a second. Sorry, guys. She'll be back. Uh oh, Mackenzie left. It's not a bash live. I'm honestly just asking her what's going on. Shame on me for talking about Macy. Okay, cool. I'm waiting for her. Sorry. It's not a bash live. Sorry. Okay. We have no these problem. new carbon monoxide monitors in this house that we moved into. 
and um, they go off a lot. And so there's like some malfunction, but you never can be too careful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people are saying, oh, you're like bashing Macy, but really you're no. just sharing your side, right? I, great mom. And huh? I, I think she's a great mom. Yeah. And I, that you should give credit where credit's due. And she is. I just think that that was crazy. It's a lot of, that's intense. I mean, how many sports is he in? Um, right now it's just, I think it's off season wrestling and baseball. So right now it's just two, two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, what was it like when he was like training for that? Like, is he crabby? Like when he's not eating like that? I mean, how was his? So we thought that he was like putting the pressure on himself, you know, like driving at home, like doing what he needed to do to be successful. And we were like, mm, like, that's a little extreme, but okay. You know? Yeah. And I just, we just didn't know that it was like that at home. Do you think he wants it or do you think she wants it more? I know he definitely wants it for sure. Yeah. You know, if, I mean, he works so hard, so hard. He is the hardest working child that I've ever come across ever. And so I know that he wants it. I just feel like he's also pushed to the limit. Yeah. So. Well, in the final scene, they were talking about how many activities he was in. And I was like, holy crap. And then she was talking about how, you know, he was not able to control anything with Ryan. So, like, how do you, I mean, has he ever talked to you and Ryan about, you know, how he feels or, like? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that they have a pretty good understanding of each other, you know, and they do talk and about all of it. So, I don't know. I'm sure it was hard. I mean, Ryan went, yeah. to, oh, he was in, like. Of course. He went to jail. He went to treatment. Mm -hmm. It was a confusing time for a child. Yes. For since sure. since he's been out of treatment, have he and Bentley been able to like establish a better relationship? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He sees him every. It's like almost every weekend. Sometimes every other weekend, he's at Jen and Larry's house, and we pack up all the kids and we go over there and we stay. So you stay over at Jen and Larry's house with them mm -hmm. for the weekend. Yeah. So. Has he ever considered doing any sort of, like, does he have any plans to change the custody at all? Yeah. So, since I haven't been able to talk, it's just been kind of weird. Like, nobody really knows what's going on. And she said, you know, that if he took a drug test that he, well, she says on the show, if he takes a drug test, he can, you know, take Bentley and whatever. But he tried to do that, and there was no, like, response so so she wasn't responding or she wasn't allowing like or like he did he take a drug test but we can go tomorrow to this and blah 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 listed out the address and like no response so so no response okay so what makes you like the most like upset about what you saw this last tonight I just never want any of our kids to ever feel like they have to go to those links to be successful because that's not true. You know, you train, you do your practices, you win some, you lose some, and ultimately you want to win, but you don't have to, to go that far. And I get it that there are, you know, wrestlers, like that's how they do things. But at 11 years old, I just don't think that introducing those kind of habits at such a young age end well ever. You know, what does Ryan think about it? It makes him really sad. I mean, we just had no idea. So did he watch tonight? No, no. I told him about it. And then he, he doesn't watch the show. He doesn't watch the show. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so he just doesn't even care. That's funny. Yeah. I mean, when I told him we were both just like heartbroken. <laughs> so did he, so he's, it's just a hard place to be, you know? Yeah. 
obviously people are critical in the comments because they're like, oh, he's a, Ryan's a drug addict. Ryan yeah. hasn't been around for a very long time. Macy's a good mom. I don't think anyone is saying that Macy's not no. a good mom. No, not at all. Um, but I do think there's, I mean, I was reading today that, you know, he's cutting weight. It's not healthy for an 11 year old boy to be trying to lose weight. 11 year old boys are on the verge of puberty and they actually should be ramping up the amount that they're eating to gain weight. And he's trying to lose weight to sit into a class and he's doing club wrestling, right? Yeah. Which mm -hmm. isn't even really that serious. And when he's doing everything, I mean, I think the part that made me the most upset watching the episode was when she was like getting upset with him for having a muffin. And he looked like he was like so guilty because he said he had a glass of milk. Yeah. And then the way she was like kind of yelling at him when he went onto the scale. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I guess I can't imagine having a child and doing that. If he's only having 11, a thousand, how long is the, the wrestling season? Uh, all winter. All winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's like a rough place to be because I, I am not, and I can't say anything, you know, I'm, that's just not my place. What's the season overall been like for you? Like, what about like other stuff that's happened this season that's been struggling, that you've been struggling with? Um, I mean, it's just been like a bumpy ride. You know, some days are, or some of the episodes are like really good and really cute and really accurate. Some of them just like, ugh, you know, just kind of cringy. Like some of the stuff, you know, Ryan should not have said but he did oh last week he was like oh why did i say that you know when About i was being a, be, being a baby yeah he was like oh i should not have said that so and like the how about like her cons insinuating that he's using i mean i don't know how someone who doesn't even like talk to some to, to him can say that but that's cool so he hasn't been using? No. No? Mm -mm. Is he in recovery and doing programs and stuff? Yes. We both are. Oh, you both are? Mm hmm Are you doing, like, Al-Anon stuff? Yeah. Every oh, Tuesday. What? Every Tuesday I go. And now it's virtual stuff, and it's been virtual stuff because of COVID. But, yeah, mm -hmm. I've been doing it for a while, and I, I really like it. What have you been learning? Just, like, we've been going through the steps and stuff, and... So for the most part in our meetings, like I just listen because I'm not at the point where like I'm ready to share. So, you know, about just about letting go of control and like you're not in control of, you know, anything really. And that is like the biggest thing for me because I've always tried to have like a, ho a hold on everything. Yeah. So like letting go of that kind of control. And I mean, I'm really enjoying it and I feel like I'm getting a lot out of it. So and how to like encourage Ryan and not be naggy and, you know, hold him accountable. And he, does he go to programs too? Yes. On his own. On he, his own. Mm -hmm. Do you do them together and on his own? No. No. So he just does them on his own. Yeah. And I do. do and you do yours on your own. And do you guys like talk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He like, well, like on the steps. <laughs> on the steps. Yeah. So he's doing 12 steps, obviously. Yeah. Okay. I think people get, I mean, obviously addiction is, it's, it's a challenge and it's not a perfect process. Um, it's like a one day at a time. Yeah. Every day. So outside of not having control, have you learned about like enabling and um, that kind of aspect of it? Yes. <laughs> and... That's yeah, go ahead. That's the biggest thing people always criticize you for is that you're enabling Ryan. Right. And while they may think that because it might come across that way on the show behind the scenes, I mean, like I'm on it. I'm on it. Like yeah. I'm right behind him. Yeah. I'm not afraid to hurt his feelings. 
So, and set <laughs> boundaries and set limits. Yes. It's tough. I mean, I always feel like this, the, the hardest part probably with being on a reality show is like, not everything is accurate. A lot of it is edited. Right. Um, we're, we're seeing the filtered view through Macy's eyes. Obviously there's realities here. You know, there was arrests, there was yes. time, time in jail. There was missing, um, was he in rehab with Jagger's birth? Yeah. Yeah. So he was there for Stella's birth. Yes. And we got to see Stella and you guys briefly talked about it, but yeah. what was, what was that like for him to be there for the birth and to have that support with you? Well, it all happened so fast. So like, like I said about the control thing, you know, I have been induced with all my kids. And so I've had like a set plan and time and date. And this time she just came on her own and, you know, we were like running to the hospital at six o'clock in the morning. And so we just got to do everything together and like be a team. And for the first time ever, it was just me and him in the delivery room. And it was a very special bonding moment that I won't ever forget. You know, he was nervous. Like I've never seen him nervous like that. So what's been the biggest change between like, as a father between him being clean versus like before when he was sort of in that haze, like what has been the biggest difference in the house? He's very patient. Patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a very patient person and he's not as harsh, you know, like, especially with, with Stella. Well, obviously you can't get onto her, but you know, he just is very calming and gets her to calm down and helpful. And I mean, I really, I'm very thankful. So he's helping. How old is she now? She's what? Five. She'll be five months on the first. Oh my gosh. Is she sleeping through the night yet? Probably yes. not. Oh, she is. Mm -hmm. All of my kids have been great sleepers. <laughs> I'm yeah. really, really lucky. Wow. Yeah. So is he like when she wasn't, was he getting up with her or were you, you breastfeeding? Oh no. He stayed up with her every night and would feed her. So I could sleep for the first like forever and so in that episode where they where he was saying well really she sleeps a lot and I said no not really that was chopped up and the producer had asked us so do you think it's like any different um you know having Jagger and her right now and she was just newly born so she was sleeping all the time and I was like no not really but they cut off that question so it looked like I was just giving Ryan like dagger eyes. <laughs> oh, you just look tired. I, I oh, during yeah. that episode, you looked, you had that like brand new look of mom <laughs> still like, I haven't slept yet since I gave birth. Right. Yes. But I had been sleeping. I was just exhausted. <laughs> so how has um, Jen been? Like, is she obsessed with having her princess? Yes. Yeah. She is a great person uh I adore her yeah what's your relationship like with Jen and Larry really good open and honest um it's really always been pretty good um we are there a lot and see them a lot we're really close with both sides of our families yeah we don't ever see your family but I guess I'm the show's not really about you so how what are, what's your parents involvement in all of this oh we're super close and they're very close with Ryan as well and very supportive. And, you know, they wanted to do more like with my mom and dad, but my mom works at like a private Christian school. So that was just like a no go, you know, for her job. Like the camera time and stuff. Otherwise you would see a little bit more. More of your mom. Yeah. I'm sure the privacy stuff. Are yeah. Jen and Larry, are they like, are they retired? <laughs> Like, no, mm -mm. they're not. Okay. So they do have real jobs. Yes. Every day. They're Every day. Okay. I was like, I never know what they do. Yeah. Is Ryan, is Ryan working? No. No. Just, he does some metal fabricating at our house and he went to college, but at the moment, like we just don't know. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I'm sure the show is giving you guys enough to live off of. Yes more than enough I'm guessing yeah we were we were very fortunate to be able to buy our house this season and just you know looking 
for a new season of life, then it's going fairly well. So what do you think, like, the show obviously isn't going to stay on the air forever. Um, what is the plan when this goes off the air? Like, what do you guys think you'll do? So we're looking at, well, Ryan mainly is looking at starting his own business. And he has a wide variety of things he's looking into, like, you know, diesel repair, because that's what he went to school for and is certified for. And then I would really like to um, work with my dad again, selling insurance. I I enjoyed it. I got my real estate license and hated it. So, <laughs> so I'll just go back to selling all insurance and enjoying it. <laughs> so you were selling insurance before all of this? Yeah, with my dad. Oh, is your dad in insurance too? Yes. He owns his own agency. But before I met Ryan, I worked at a hospital. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, ninth shift. You're just a baby, aren't you? Yes, at 18, I got my job working night shift to make my cash for Hudson and provide for him. And that was a really hard, long road. And then when Ryan and I got really serious, he asked me to quit my job. And so I did. Okay. So how old was Hudson when you met Ryan? Two. Two. So you were 20 when you met Ryan? Yes. Okay. And I'm 24. You're 24. Mm -hmm. So you guys have been together for four years? Yes. Okay. So you guys, okay. The one question obviously is, when did you, how long were you together when you guys got married? Uh, a little over a year. A little over a year. Yeah. Okay. The day that you guys got married was that scene where he was like nodding off in yeah. the car, right? That was the day I didn't know what to do. And that was the day that I kind of put two and two together. So you didn't know leading up to that? What Not was going on? None. So did he hide it from you? Yes. Very well. Very well. Mm -hmm. And while people say that, you know, you have to be blind to like not notice that, well, I never knew like a sober Ryan. So his actions never changed. So you didn't know he was using the whole time you were with him? No. Had you ever been around drugs? No. I grew up in a very sheltered home, household, and... You know, when I got pregnant at 17, like, I could not even drive to Walmart by myself. You know, it was just very sheltered. So what was that like when you figured it out? Like, it how was did you? Bombshell. Bombshell. <laughs> yeah. And it was the next day. And we, I went over to his mom and dad's house and we were hanging out. And then it started to get really weird. And we were like, what's going on? And then, like, fast forward a few hours, and we figured it out. And so we went to rehab, like, right then. And he was like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And then we came home. And then the day after that, he went to rehab in Texas. And it was a – how long had he been using by the time you figured it out? I don't know. You have no idea? Mm -hmm. I would say it was a, a while, but I don't know, like, what point, you know, it had escalated and stuff. Well, every, I mean, I think a lot of people are critical, but there's an yeah. opioid, there's an opioid ep epidemic and yeah. people become addicted by literally getting prescriptions from a doctor for an injury or whatever. And then it spirals and then they can't get their pills and then it turns into heroin and heroin is cheaper. And then you know, it's shooting up because you get a better high. I mean, it's, it just it can escalate so fast. Yeah. It can mm -hmm. happen to anyone and it's a very powerful drug and it's hard to get off. That's another thing is that, okay. So he, he tried to get sober for a while and then he gets, he gets the arrests and there's all these stuff in the media about all of these arrests, but was it all probation violations from yes. an original arrest? Yes. So when he was arrested all those other times, was it with drugs or was it just because that was initial charges? That was the initial charge. And it was 
like I think the month before he went to that first rehab was when he got pulled over and that was what the ticket was for and then he had to go to court and then you know was obviously like I've got a problem you know and he told the officer like I have a problem yeah and then the next month like I didn't know about the ticket and then so you didn't know he had been arrested no he no and at first the original thing was not an arrest it was just a ticket and he was supposed to go to the courthouse and then they were going to go from there and then whatever happened in that month when the day after we got married was when he went to the the rehab in Texas. So you get married and he goes to rehab. Yeah. What the hell was that like? I I had no idea. I'm like it still makes me shake. <laughs> it was just crazy. Do you ever like look back at that time and you're like I mean did it ever did you ever consider leaving at that point or something in me just told me not to leave and so I didn't and I I am like very self-aware and if I feel like I need to go like I will go I have no like when it's over it's over you know but I had come to him that night and I said look if you need help like you need to get it. And do you want it? And he mm -hmm. was like, oh, no. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm gone. And so I walked out the door. And anytime he texted me, I called an interventionist. And anytime he texted me or his parents, we were both on the same page. And anytime he texted us, we were like, look, do you want to get help? Yes or no? And he was like, no. So we wouldn't text back. And I, um, did that all night long with him and the next day I was like look are you ready to get help and he was crying he was like no and I was like okay and I hung up and then he called me one more time and said I'll get help if you come home and I said no no did it again I said are you ready to get help he said my bags are packed and I'm on the porch and that's what we went and how long did he go to rehab that was the 30 days, which wasn't that great. And then when he went for the 90 was when it really, really helped. And then he had, he ended up getting out and then he had the bar tab. Is that yes. right? Dismissed. I have dismissed, but it was still considered a probation violation. Yes. And I have, I had the receipt and it was since he was in jail, like, I don't really know all the ins and outs. I just know that since it was a probation violation, like he had to do his time. And pretty and much the DA was overseeing him. <laughs> and he's off of probation now. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's so, else going to jail for 90 days. Cut out the probation. It finished the thing. So once he got home and everything, like, what what was the biggest difference like was he finally clean did it like yeah from jail or rehab or both both yeah from rehab it was just like such a relief you know and finding your daily day-to-day -day was kind of hard but you know it's kind of like oh my gosh like I'm home you know and then he went fairly quickly back to jail and when he went to jail and came it was like having to start all over again, like just like timid and kind of freaking out, you know, like I just, I want to do good. I, I just want to get on the straight and narrow, you know? So it was a long road. He didn't like to be around anybody for a little bit. And then, you know, we started to, to get better. Does he do therapy on top of everything or just meetings? No, just meetings probably should see a counselor yeah and we I'm did sure. counseling when he was in rehab and it was fantastic we got so when, okay so when you were at the reunion last year and he and dr drew was basically saying that ryan wasn't doing a program mm -hmm. like where do you think that came from uh, i don't i mean he wasn't like then he was trying you know, he wasn't like fully committed or anything. He was doing like, what he, what worked for him. So I guess right there. And he was 
trying to explain it to Dr. Drew and he was like, you know, I want, like, I want to do my steps, and, like make the amends. Like we, we both read the big book. Like we both know the steps and he's like, but you can't make amends until a year. And he was like, but I'm trying to do that now. Like, I just want to make amends, you know? And cause he felt guilty for like, he just to, like apologize and, yeah. and, you know, and fresh with everyone. He doesn't, like, he doesn't hang out on social media, like, ever. No. And when he does, he has the weirdest posts. <laughs> it's like, is that, like, on purpose? Or is he just, like... He's, he, like, an old man. <laughs> he's, like, an old man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what is he like when he's not on camera? I mean, like, I feel like we don't he's really... A person. He, huh? He's a totally different person. He talks my ear off. And he's happy and funny and lovable. I mean, it's it's a completely different person. Huh. Yeah. I've always wondered, like, does filming, knowing the cameras are there, change the personality and make you hyper aware of what you say? Yes. It makes me very nervous. I get so nervous. Like, I start shaking. It makes him nervous. You know, you always want to say, like, kind of the right thing. But then again, you have your opinion, you know. And is it hard when you know that the storyline is, like, you? Yeah. And, you know, they're asking you questions. And you're thinking that this has gone one way. And it's great. And you're so positive and cool and, you know, have a great outlook. And then <laughs> you see the other side and you're like, I didn't know that that is where this was going you know right you only see your side and you I mean obviously can you understand Macy's like apprehension with Ryan given the fact that he went through rehab and he yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I can but I think that like if it was me and my son's dad then I would be communicating what I wanted. Sorry, my dog was whining. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> so you would have communicated what you wanted. Yeah. Like my terms, my expectations, my, like what I'm expecting from him, you know, so that we're on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that there's a way to find like, common ground or is it lost I it's it seems like it's 11 years in like how do you find I don't know I I don't know I I really do want it to work out you know and I want them to work it out I just don't know how that works how it looks like you know my son's dad and I we rarely get along or see eye to eye on things but that doesn't matter you know it's all about Hudson yeah and I just want them to be able to do the same thing did the is the um the restraining order is it is it expired yes has that changed in anything mm -mm, no so how does communication happen mainly through his mom yeah but in his eyes, like, he gets to see Bentley almost every weekend, you know, and he's like, why would I want to fight with her, like, about any of it, you know, because I'm getting to see him a lot. Like, why, why would I want to fight? You know, I'm getting to spend a lot of time with him, getting to do things, like, basically, because he won't take a drug test. Didn't you just say he has taken drug tests? He offered to go take one, and there was no response. Like, there just has to be communication. <laughs> yeah. I think that's one of the big things. Is there anyone in your life that can help bridge that, like, so that you guys can have a better open communication? I don't know. I, I mean, I, I hope. I just don't know. You know? I don't know who would help make that better. Do you feel like he's doing things differently with the, your kids that you had together than he did with Bentley? I wasn't there. 
you know, so I, I don't know. I mean, I assume we're, we're all in different places in life. Yeah. If I'm doing things differently with our kids that we have together than I did with Hudson. Cause I'm not 18 anymore, you know? Right. So I just don't know. Well, he's obviously more involved. <laughs> yes. Now. Right. Yes. Mm hmm. They had, I don't know, Macy and Ryan's relationship was kind of like oil and vinegar. Like, they just didn't yep. really mix. Right. How, how do you feel like your relationship with Ryan is different? We see we're pretty much on the same page about just about everything. So we get along really good. We spent, I mean, he is like my best friend. I just, I don't know, I just think. We were. Is it hard to be home with him all the time during quarantine? And then, like, <laughs> we're pretty much home together all the time, all the time. <laughs> so, no, not really. No, okay. I do my thing. We don't really get at each other's throats. Does he, like, go into the shop like you did with Macy and ignore you all the day time? That's what he always did with Macy. He was always ignoring her. He goes into the shop, yes. But, I mean, I hang out down there. <laughs> So he, but no, he does not ignore me. That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. They were really young when they got together, like super young. Yes. They didn't really, they weren't even dating that long either. I think when they got pregnant, right? I don't know. The only thing I've seen is recently they had a recap of like their relationship timeline. I think it was like on the teen mom. Mm hmm Instagram. <laughs> and all I saw was the ain't nothing gonna be good enough for you no way and I was like okay I mean okay so here's the thing with teen mom fans they are either like if Macy is either like their goddess or they hate her and that's I feel like how all these girls are I feel like if you if you are have a Macy stan and you say anything critical then everyone thinks they're bullying Macy which yeah. Having a critical opinion about what you see on TV doesn't mean you're bullying someone. Right. It really just means that you're evaluating what it is that you see. And nobody right. nobody is perfect. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely say that at times I think she comes off very, like, controlling. <laughs> um, and I don't see it just with, like, Brian. I see it with, you know, Bentley and how she was tonight on the episode about his wrestling and all the sports she has him in. And I feel like sometimes people do that when they feel like they don't have any control. Yeah. But it was weird because like at the end of this episode, I swear to God, she was slurring. I'm sure you can't say anything, but I was like, what the hell? I don't know. I don't know. I hope she wasn't, but I swear I heard it. I just hope that everybody, you know, that needs help will get it. Yeah. That's not directed at her. I just mean across the board. <laughs> right. You know. What do you think is everyone's like, okay, you have that whole thing where you get married and then you have your second, oh, I forgot about your second wedding. Yeah. Where Ryan was making all kinds of like rude comments. Yeah. And it was, there was literally like five minutes of that. Oh, yeah, and, then it was, not, and then it was over. Yeah. It was like five minutes of us having a conversation. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> and then we were good. <laughs> and then you were done. Yeah. Okay. Other question. Is he drinking? Because that's another thing that drives people crazy. No. He rare, rarely, if ever, has a drink. Okay. So it, he's not like not drinking, like, you know, but he doesn't hardly ever. I think in the past year, he's maybe had like one beer. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. The other question, is he using, is he on any like replacements like Suboxone or nothing? No, nothing. Okay. So the video, okay. The one episode when they were at the zoo, everyone was convinced he was using. Yeah. Because apparently he was acting like a monkey. Okay. I don't know. I don't know why people thought he was using. Was yeah. there, or or how about the fight with Larry when he was fighting with Larry? That was going to happen anyway, regardless of anything. That okay. was, that had been boiling, and you know we would we had been living there, and 
the whole like look at me talk to me you know he was like didn't want to say anything there and so it just had been building and building and building and then it all came to a head but that's nothing new with them they're just kind of like well, he was, yeah, I mean, I think he was trying to say, like, Ryan, is it really just about the restraining order? Like, maybe wanting Ryan to take a little bit more accountability with... Yeah, and then they didn't show parts of the conversation where it's like, I just want you to, like, take my side. Like, they were seeing two, they were talking about two completely different points. Sure. And so, they're talk. you know, Ryan's, like, talking to him about one thing, and then Larry's talking to him about another, and then it just starts building, and then... And then they leave, and it was like. Then the next day, they were, talking and they were good. <laughs> okay, yeah. and he wasn't using that night. No, not. Did he fall down? Everyone was upset, like worried about his scabs on his face. No, he didn't fall down. Mm -mm. Okay, because they were convinced he was on drugs again, and he's kicking his skin. Oh no, no. no. Okay, he does. He's a Huh? He does have some zits. <laughs> these are the these are the comments I see all the time. So I'm trying to think of all of the no. things that people say. Yeah, there's some wild ones out there. That's there cool. are. There's lots of conspiracies, <laughs> and I think it's hard. You have to balance everything. I mean, there's people even in this in this live right now, right. Being super be, being super rude and yeah. Um, as, as you're talking, I'm glancing at the comments. <laughs> I'm ignoring it. They're being so terrible. Yeah. Um, some people are sticking up for you. I think it's hard, though, because, like, obviously, if you're not familiar with addiction and you've never been in a relationship with an addict, it's easy to judge from an outside perspective and, like, make you the villain and say that you're the bad person. And, yeah. You know, I, I think it's easy sometimes to make you the person. Like, I always feel like there's that everyone wants to have someone to hate, you right. know? Listen, um, nobody's ever going to like me. And that's just right. how it is. Like, there's a select few of them out there that are so sweet. And they send me um, messages all the time saying, like, I see it. Like, I get it. You know, I get it. I get it. I get it. I've lived it. I understand. But then, but nobody really, a majority, is ever going to like me. And that's whatever. It's on you. It's rude to ask her all of these questions about her husband. I don't know. So if I didn't, if I thought it was rude, I wouldn't answer. I would just say next or whatever. Well, no, I mean, we've been talking about going live for a long, long time. And yeah. like just talking about what's going on with the episode. It's so with this, right. like with being on the show. So it's not like any of these questions are surprising. A lot of the right. stuff I've asked, I've asked you privately. So it's, um, one thing about that I don't think people understand is like, you know, we were talking about how people are like, oh, you're judging or you're doing this. Like, I'm not going to say anything to anyone that I wouldn't say or say, wait, I'm confusing my own self. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about someone behind their back and say something that I wouldn't say to their face ever. Right. Like, yeah, anything that I say to you, like I would say to her face, to Ryan's face, you know, to Jen and Larry's face, to my parents' face. I would say all of that. Like, I'm not ever going to change that about myself. So. <laughs> I think it's hard. I mean, you're in an impossible situation. Yeah. Impossible. Yes. And I mean, I even walked into meeting you thinking you were like the Black Widow. Yes. Like the, the person that, you know, just wanted a spot on Teen Mom. Yeah. I get that. That was... Well, that was one of the rumors was that when Farrah left, you wanted a spot. No, they did consider me and they talked about it and they wanted to film more of me and Hudson and Hudson's dad's dynamic, but he wasn't about that. And then they went a different direction. It was, it was like, okay, you know, it wasn't like a, oh darn, you know, it wasn't that at all. Right. I don't and even know how that would really work with Ryan being, being a dad. The funny thing, I, I mean, I think the thing people don't see about you and that I have learned about you is that you're the kind of person that like, even if you're mad at someone, you are literally like, how can I pray for them? How can I like think good thoughts for them? Yeah. Like not, 
just because you're critical about it, something that happens with Macy doesn't right. mean you automatically hate her. You no. know, you, you guys all want the best for the kids. Yes. I want, all even for my enemies, like, I don't have a whole lot of them, but you know, for the ones, for the people that I don't care for, like, I don't ever want anything bad to happen to anyone. I don't want bad to happen to anyone, period. So, you know. Well, no, nobody does, right? Nobody. There are some people. <laughs> the Teen Mom fans are the worst. I mean, they're not the worst. They're, you know, very they're animated. Doozies. There's some sweeties. <laughs> yeah. There's the Hatters. There's the yeah. There's the ones that want to... There's the pro Macy's. I don't know that there's a lot of non pro Macy's, but what about the other, anything else with any of these other um, storylines this year? Like, have you reached out at all to Mackenzie? Like, I haven't first... met her. I've never met her. Never. Oh, no, never. So I didn't really feel comfortable, like, reaching out, you know, I didn't know, like, what I would say or how to say it. You know, I just, Hope everyone knows, like, my heart breaks for her, you know, and I'm praying for her anyways, but, like, I didn't say, I haven't reached out to her. What is your, um, I can't, there are people, <laughs> okay, what's your favorite storyline of all the others, like, if you ha could have picked yours, like, what's your, who is the, the storyline you, you identify with the most? None. None? None. <laughs> No, not one. Not one. No. You mean you don't get arrested and with a machete and then fly some guy from Belgium to your house for three months? No, can't say that has happened. And then make him take a lie detector test? No. 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 That so might be something to invest in, though. <laughs> What'd you say? You that might make... be something to invest in. Though. Yeah, maybe Ryan could take a lie detector test, even oh, though that's... they don't really work. Oh, no. Do you think Ryan would pass? Yeah. He's yeah. pretty, he's a pretty sh straight arrow. <laughs> that's I another just... thing. Like when he came home, like we just had to agree, like when we did our therapy together, like it's just going to be straightforward. Like I can't be kind of timid or nervous about your response. Like, I'm just going to have to tell you how I really feel about things. And he was the same way. So we've kind of given each other that mutual, you know. Yeah. Respect, I guess. Okay. That was the, oh, I, I just thought of another question. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're doing the, the mutual respect. Okay. So there was this one, you did a thing about domestic violence yes. this, this year. And yes. you said, you know, about doing a rate awareness and painting purple. Yeah. Um, and just sort of speaking out about, obviously with the COVID quarantine, there has been an increase and a spike in domestic violence calls. And there's a lot of people stuck at home with their abusers. Yes. And you talked about how you were in a previous relationship that was abusive and now you are no longer in one. Yeah. So it's not what, with Ryan. <laughs> not with Ryan. Okay. But obviously the haters were like, but he's verbally abusive. No. I'm very quick to put Ryan in his place and he's very quick to know when he was wrong. And I'm the same way. Like we all say things when we're angry. I say things that I don't mean sometimes, but I'm quick to correct the situation, but he is not verbally abusive to me. He is probably the most supportive person besides my parents that I have in my life. Well, I thought it was great that you did speak out against yeah. domestic violence because literally no one else on the cast has. And that's actually why I reached out to you because yeah. um, I feel like it's a missed opportunity by MTV, yeah. um, especially with what happened with Amber. Instead of right. focusing on, you know, Amber having um, a better relationship with her kids, their storyline now is this new love interest, which is right. gross. You know, like Amber get right with your kids. Like, come yeah. on now. Right. And none of the other girls have spoken out or made any sort of statements. MTV has not done anything. I know. Not I don't understand that. Not one PSA. It's yeah, all about it's like mental health. Yeah. 
which is important. And so is addiction. And so is everything you should know about your sex life or whatever. <laughs> right. You know, it is all important, but let's add all of those. Like if you're going to pick one, then we need to be inclusive with all of them. Correct. And nobody's in your comments. Nobody's bullying Amber. We're literally no. just talking about a storyline. Like she yes. was arrested for domestic violence. She pled guilty. Um, she's on probation. There has typically been PSAs by networks when domestic violent arrests happen. And MTV has done that in the past and they haven't done that this year. Yeah. So it's just, I think it's important, but that's just me. And with COVID and stuff, you know, like the domestic violence, it's not just a, you know, slap on the face or people don't understand that. Like people die every day from domestic violence every day. And I just think that for me personally, when I spoke out about it, it wasn't in regard to Amber or, or anything like that. It was just a, basically a public service announcement that, Hey, look, this is out there. It's not talked about and not just here, but across the board, you know, and I'm seeing this on the news and that there are just all these spikes in cases and people are dying and child abuse is going unreported. And I just, my heart hurts for everyone going through that because I know how hard it is. Yeah. It's awful. Like, but like you said in your in your thing, like sometimes getting going to work is the only time people get away from their abusers. Yes. And then they're not able to go to work. So they're stuck right there. And like, what do you do? You know? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I just hate it. So do you do any, like, okay, so you're busy with two kids. Um, did Have you, like, reached out to any, like, Oops. <laughs> shelters or, like, um, actually, yeah, I have, there is a domestic violence coalition in Chattanooga and I have reached out to them, um, in regards to like bringing awareness to their, um, whole organization. Yeah. And so I'm just waiting on a reply. That's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome to use like your platform for good. You have a decent sized platform, like almost 500,000, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, things that you're doing? Like work or I don't even know, like, are you pushing anything, promoting anything? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. No, I do have an agent. Ryan has an agent. And so like we get little deals here and there, but I only accept deals from like things that I actually use. I don't want people. That's another thing. Like I hate when, people do the clickbait or like posting things that you know that they don't use, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, and I don't want yeah, you don't wasting their the money. Click, you don't post the clickbait at all. No, because I think it is awful. It is awful. Yeah. Like, Some of those headlines, I'm just like, what are you thinking? Yeah. Like, why do you think that this is okay? And I don't do the, I don't even think if they know that they're being posted because a third party, posts you do. Oh, you, you do? post it. I have the email. Oh, yes. I'll send it right over. <laughs> so they post it themselves? Yes. Okay. They say we're always post... criticizing Kale for her using Carly as clickbait. Yeah. So they send you, they say, hey, we have a post about whatever. And we'll pay you X amount of dollars for this amount of clicks or per click or swipe up. And then you post it onto your story. And it's bizarre. And I just can't get with that. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I have the email from the company themselves. I will, I can, I've posted it before. Oh, it's awful. Wow. Yeah. And well, somebody I'm just you're... said that I built content for their clickbait tomorrow. <laughs> yes, probably so. Probably so. <laughs> but if Here's you have any things. questions, you can ask it here. <laughs> yeah, like I, um, people are just not gonna, trolls, man, trolls. Everyone has trolls. Yeah. 
Is Ron it's okay <laughs> talking about all this? Yeah, I mean, everything is on TV. And if you don't talk about it, like people are just going to believe the fake stuff, you know, and the edited. So it's not hurting anything. Rather you see my point of view than not, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your, I have no idea how much, oh, I'm probably going to run out of time. What is your last like parting thoughts about this season? Oh, I have a good one. So okay. <laughs> this is funny. So Ryan's teeth did not fall out. He has a chipped tooth and it's bonded. And so everybody's saying that his teeth rotted. And so every now and again, that bonding will break off. And then he'll have to go to like an emergency dentist. And get it. So fixed. how did he chip the tooth? It was years ago, like way before I ever met him, like years and years. And okay. he, somebody hit his head and he hit it on a beer bottle and it broke both the front teeth right here. And so he had to have them both bonded. So you'll oh. see where sometimes it'll break and he'll have to go, like he was eating a bowl of cereal the last time and it just snapped right off. And the first, I never knew that. And the first time it happened, it was like four o'clock in the morning and he had gotten up to go to the bathroom and he came back and he was like, Hey, and I was like, ah, <laughs> you're missing half your tooth. Like what the heck is going on? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. You know, that actually happened to my husband. I didn't even know he had a bridge. Yeah. And then it fell out. And then he was like, do you want to see my hillbilly mouth? And I was <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, Oh my God, no way. Right. So uh, yeah, it, it happens to the best of us. Yes. <laughs> okay, so he does not have, me um, as people in here were saying, meth. meth mouth. No. Meth wasn't even his no. drug of choice. And All right. He won't get a veneer either. He won't get a veneer? No. Because he's terrified of the dentist. <laughs> He actually went to get one, and the dentist was like, okay, we're going to numb your mouth now. And he, like, bolted out of the chair. <laughs> he was like, I can't do it. Ah. Well, they, you know what they do? They have to, like, grind the whole yes. tooth, tooth down, right? Yes. He was like, I'll just live with my bonding. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know. People have talked about veneers, and I'm like, I don't know if I want my teeth ground down like that. No. No, because what about when you're poor and they – pop off <laughs> and you can't get a new one and you have a I know. stub. Oh, I know. Somebody once was like, oh, I'll help you get veneers. And I was like, no. And he's like, that's like $75,000. <laughs> and I was like, what? I know. He said, what if you need a new one? <laughs> then what? I know. All right. Well, Mac, I'm so glad you joined me. Yes. Thank you. We sat through some hater comments, but that's okay. Yes. You have through it. <laughs> yes, we powered through it. You have uh, um, so much to say, obviously. Um, I will save this live for anyone wondering. I'll also be uploading it to YouTube for all of you to see. But um, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>